and give you some broad information about the mobile web, what it means, how it all connects, uh, where it's going, where it's coming from, and we're going to focus on these particular questions today. We're going to look at the state of mobile devices very briefly. Most of you are aware of this, but I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Then we're going to try to understand what mobile users You've got to understand your market before you can market to them. So we're going to talk about the mobile user and how they operate. And, and, and some of you are mobile users, so you think, well, I know me. Well, it's not as simple as that because there's a whole new generation coming up that's much younger than us, and they have different points of view on the mobile world. So we need to understand them as well. Then we're going to look at dedicated versus web mobile apps. There are two different worlds completely, and you need to understand the differences, how one might benefit you and how the other might benefit you, depending on your business. And of course, then the cost is associated with it. That's probably the real uh, eye-opener, so to speak. <laughs> Sticking <laughs> then point. Then we're going to look at what is mobile web. When you hear that term, what does that mean? So we're going to talk about that so that you're really clear on what the terminology is. First step in the mobile web is being mobile friendly. So we're going to talk about that because that's the first place you're going to go is be mobile friendly. That's the cheapest point of entry. And then lastly, help you decide whether you need it, whether it's appropriate for your business, and guess what, how do I get started? And then next month, we're actually going to dive into more technical stuff so that you can take this information, and hopefully between now and then, you've kind of thought through what it is that is really important for your business, so that when you come, you'll be able to then focus on the parts of all of this that are going to be meaningful to your business. Because there's a lot here and a lot, some of it is not appropriate for different businesses. And, and uh, <clears throat> you'd be wasting your money in other words. Okay. Basically, this is what you have for mobile devices. You have your traditional mobile device and there are still a lot of them out there. A lot of your inexpensive phone services provide these small little flip phones. And you have to realize that those are some of your customers as well. And they are very primitive browsers and they have few if no applications on them. And the few applications they have are provided by the carrier. That's the phone carrier, okay? You'll hear the term, and we'll talk about it a little bit later, on the carrier deck or being on carrier or being off carrier. That's the kinds of applications and where they reside, whether they're serviced by the phone carrier or whether they're not. And obviously if you can get an application to be provided by the phone carrier, you've really got a lock on the market. So, and of course that takes a lot of money. So for us small businesses, that's probably not even a, real, a realistic <coughs> expectation. Smartphones. Most of us have smartphones. It's becoming very dominant now, but it still has not take, completely taken over the market, but it will pretty soon. And they have much better browsers. They have browsers that compete basically in terms of their functionality with your browser on your desktop. The big problem is, is they're really tiny. <laughs> okay, so that is the big problem. So we need to we need to address that. The next level is to take your smartphone and expand it, and you have a tablet. It's somewhere between your smartphone and your desktop. And it provides you more opportunities in terms of how your websites look and how they function. And, um, and we got to keep that in mind too. So we don't want to, there are a lot more people that are using their tablets instead of their phones for a lot of their searching and their, their activities. So we have to keep that in mind too. Yes, how many of you have fingers that are small enough to use your phones? <laughs> Most of us guys don't. <laughs> so I've gotten very good at managing the zero, that's part of my thumb that hits the right hey. spot. <laughs> Tap it just right. <laughs> It's amazing how you develop that after a while. Yep. And then, of course, one of the key things is the support of HTML5 over all these platforms as we move forward. As that has become supported more, it becomes easier to provide better web experiences for all of these groups. Okay. So HTML5 is kind of the key technology that's going to make a lot of what you want to do in these platforms more likely. So if you're not familiar with HTML5 and you're in, want to be involved more in actually building stuff, then you really need to understand it. If you're not into building, then you just need to be aware that that's a key technology. 
which means that when you hire somebody to do it, you need to say, will you be using HTML5? Or will you be using Flash? Yeah. Because Flash is apparently going away. Well, for, for this market, it's going away because a lot of it isn't being supported by therapists. And those who don't have consistent support. And really what you want is you want consistent support across all platforms at all times and all hardware. So, Okay, mobile conser consumer activities. What, do those, what does the mobile consumer do in general terms? Okay, they're involved in payment systems stuff online. They generally want small price tags. Under $5 is, is a typical price tag that a mobile user expects to see when they go buy something. In other words, people don't usually buy expensive things on their mobile phone as much right now. It's not impossible, but it's just not as likely. Okay, they're, they're really, there's expect, expectation of a very low price point. Walled garden, security. This is where they expect that privacy. Okay, so keep that in mind when you're working with them, especially when uh, they're working with dedicated apps. So this is your dedicated app area. So if you're doing something that requires a lot of security, then a dedicated app is going to be the way to go. Established forefronts. This is where we get the carrier deck. This is what I was talking about earlier, where the carrier provides various types of applications and services to the various smartphones, and a lot of people get involved. And the last thing is to be able to personalize all that, to have this all personalized for you, you know, to make it, to make it work exactly the way you want it to work. And so mobile users are very into that personalization. Okay, what are their motivators? <coughs> What's their motivations generally? This is all taken from big surveys, and I'll show you some of the surveys the results of these surveys in a minute. Staying connected, locating places, things, and events. That's probably the number one thing. Okay? Locating places, things, and events. Search is probably the number one thing people do on their mobile device. Looking for stuff. Okay? Things that are location-based offers. If you go here now, you will get a discount if you show them the coupon that I'm showing you on your phone. Okay. Time-based offers, if you go there by such and such a time and show them that you've logged in and the coupon that's on your screen, you will get a discount. Okay, Things that grab people right away, and that involves oftentimes coupons and the way they're delivered to the mobile user. Push notifications, signing up for, like for example, I just installed an app while I was on vacation this last weekend that um, it's called Field Trip. Basically what it means is as you go around, it alerts you about something cool that happens to be going on within a mile of where you are right now. So some event, some historical monument. It'll, it'll, matter of fact, I had two of them on there right now as I drove here to Oceanside to let me know that there were, there were a couple of things going on right here locally. Okay, and this is all being provided by various databases that you could possibly get your business tied into. That would then an application like Field Trip, which is put out by Google. So this is a Google app. Guys, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> and then you would find yourself being having your business or your activity being pushed onto people's handsets as they drove by. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. So there's a lot of that kind of thing going on, and that's where push notifications are. In other words, they just show up on my phone screen saying, oh, there's an event going on right now, one mile away. Push this, and I'll show you the map to it. Okay, and so you can go over there and check it out. So that's how mobile consumers, and that's what motivates mobile consumers to use their, their mobile phones. Okay, now the very last stream, the very last page, because it was so, it was impossible to have it shrunk down to that little image, so I, I took another one and printed it all out. This, this is a really good, I found this and I thought, wow, this is really educational. This really tells me a lot. Basically, it's looking at the kinds of favorite mobile activities and preferences for, uh, on apps versus browser. 
Now, most of us sort of automatically think that applications have a preference or that they might be cooler or people will like them more. What this little chart's telling you is that's not the case. Go down here and compare these numbers and you'll see you've got a lot bigger numbers on this side on most of them. Matter of fact, all but maybe three a browser wins in terms of web browsing. In other words, mobile web versus dedicated applications. Sorry, yes. I'm, I'm confused. When you, when you say prefer browser, does that mean prefer using your, your desktop? No, prefer using the browser on your phone, on your mobile app, versus a dedicated application. In other words, an application right here. So you have a dedicated application. One of these little guys. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Okay. Would they prefer to do an activity by clicking a dedicated application or by going down and hitting the browser and doing a search there? Oh, I see. To Google okay. for something. <clears throat> to Google something. Yeah. <laughs> right. Or Bing it or whatever. Yeah. Okay. The browser wins in most cases. Now, this is very good for you. Very good for you because that's where it's easier for you to have a presence. It's cheaper for you to have a presence there. Of course, you're going to have to make yourself more friendly, which we'll get to, but <laughs> that's a lot cheaper than a dedicated app, which we'll also talk about just to, to really enlighten you as to how expensive those dedicated apps really are. Anyway, this was very educational. It's also very educational to look at where you might fit in all of these areas. Look at your business and look at these activities and see where you might be able to tie in something. And that would give you some ideas of the preferences of your consumer. Okay? Well, this is a very good, very good chart for you to kind of get a, a feeling of the kind of activities and where your business might fit in. Mobile search. So a lot of it revolves around mobile search. Okay, people do a lot of that. And so you want your website to be mobile friendly and searchable. One out of three searches are local. They're right around where that person is living, right where they're at. Okay? Seventy-nine percent of smartphone users use their phones for shopping. Shopping for little things and finding things and researching whether uh, is that bike this cost or is it over here that cost and comparing prices before they actually go to buy it. They don't necessarily buy it online, but they want to do their comparison shopping before they go buy it. Now, obviously, if they buy it online, they're going to want a little price point, but if they're looking for something, they are going to want to compare prices online, and that's very valuable to them. 71% of smartphone users you search for more information based on while they're watching TV. They're sitting there watching TV. They grab their phone and they look it up. That's a new behavior that we never saw before. This is brand new. Well, not brand new like today, but brand new like in the last few years. Okay? Or they're reading their newspaper. They pull out their phone right there and they look it up. So if you're doing ads, what do you need to do? You need to give them a chance to find you from your ad as well. Make sure they can get to your website from the ad so they can look up more information. And online ads. Okay? So this is 71%. That's a huge number. Now, this is a, this is kind of an interesting contra number, you know, the, the flip side of the coin, that 79% of online advertisers do not have a mobile-friendly site. So there's 79% of those businesses out there who are kind of falling flat on their face without realizing it. Can you give us like an example? I, want, I, want to, I really want to get my teeth around that one. Example of? Okay, so an online advertiser, like this is someone big, like... Has something on Google. They paid for an ad on Google. Like a Starbucks, would that be? Well, yeah. I think Starbucks is probably doing a good job, but let's say you bought uh, uh, an ad on Google, you know, an okay. AdSense type ad. Okay. Or, uh, and they go then, they found you on their browser and they clicked you and they went to your website and they just went, whoa. It took forever to load. Okay. They couldn't, they had to, they had to pinch and scan to find things. And you'll find mobile users don't like to pinch and scan too much. They have to do too much of that. Goodbye. 
you know, you make them work too hard. So mobile friendly, and we'll get into the details of mobile friendly. That's important because mm -hmm. you just went online to advertise and that person, you know, we have a huge number, 79% and 71%, huge numbers. You know, three quarters of those people came from those ads while they were on their phone, not so, while they were on a desktop. So would that mean that you were looking at new technology but not reviewing what you currently had? It would seem like if you were savvy enough to be having ads that you'd already have. Apparently 79% weren't. I, I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That, that's, the, that's why I brought the number up. It's like, wow, you know, that they're doing online <coughs> advertising, but they're missing, they're missing this huge market at the same time. Yeah, to give you a, a, a real life example, that's pretty much the mistake I nearly made. I nearly, just before Christmas, paid for some Google pay per clicks. Uh -huh. Fortunately, they screwed it all up, so I didn't get charged. Um, <laughs> my website has Flash, uh -huh. which means that anybody, if, if, if I'm right in saying this, yes. uh, anybody who goes to my website from a mobile device will just get a, a message to say, you know, download Adobe. They, they, they can't see the flash image. Uh -huh. okay. so and if they're on an iPhone, they won't, they won't ever see it. it. No. And if they're on an iPhone, they won't ever see it. They can't even download it. Right. At all. Oh, right. So, <laughs> so did you get rid of the flash? Not yet. That's why I'm here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> would that be the solution? That would be a start, but you would also need to understand the next part of the presentation, and, and then again next month, about doing a mobile-friendly app and how you go about that. And along with those numbers, Google keeps uh, statistics, and they say 60% of the people that that find up find you if you can be found, 60% of the people with that attention scroll, they abandon you, and 40% okay. of them will not refer that website out. That's right. That's so basically, a business is losing 60% of the customers once they. That's right. Found. So this is becoming. That's why you know. That's why this presentation is. Uh, it, it, came about because I've been thinking about it for a while. Actually, I need to blame CC here for actually bringing it up a couple of months ago and saying, you know, what? And I'm going, yeah, I've been thinking about that. And so she got me off my duff, so to speak. I said, okay, let's get on with this. Thanks, CC. <laughs> I just know what my clients are screaming. Right, yeah. We, we, we had a meeting about it, and I'm going, yeah, we better start dealing with this a little bit more. And so. You know, I try. I try to. Yeah, I try to be a kind of a person who had hit me over the head too many times. You know. <laughs> yeah, you're good at suggestions. Yeah, I take my suggestions. Yes. <laughs> anyway, so that's important. Here's another little interesting uh, chart by the by the same uh, website called Moby Thinking. So you might want to go to MobyThinking.com. They have a lot of very interesting articles in these areas. This is by category. Searches by category. Uh, you're looking at one third of all people that are going to a restaurant will find them first through their mobile. Automotive, consumer electronics, you see, and these numbers are going to go up. So this was this was 2011. So we're now in 2013, and I'm sure those numbers have gone up by 10 or 15 percent each in each successive year. So we're probably going to be approaching the 50% mark pretty soon as we move forward. So you're going to see these numbers growing. This was a couple years ago. So, and life is moving forward, and so are these numbers. Mobile searches are doubling every three or four months. That's right. Yeah, they're saying, they're saying in the last five years they have quadrupled, mm -hmm. and they're going to be accelerating even faster. So, I mean, we're looking at a, we're looking at that hockey stick kind of a curve. That's crazy. That's mobile group 400 is one last yeah, so it's uh, so these are these are from several years ago, and we know these numbers are going to be a lot bigger. Okay, so this should be an eye opener for all of us. Okay, regardless of what business you're in. So does this mean also that our possibly our prices could drop as far as mobile carriers, or is that going to affect anything? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> no, I, the demand for the raises. They might even raise them. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is really popular. Let's raise those prices. Yeah. Is this my way of thinking free, or do you subscribe to it, or how do you get this? Thing? It's just a website. Yeah, it's MobyThinking.com. Yeah. The research. Yeah, they do a lot of research and do blog articles, and it's interesting material. Yeah, yeah. 
I found them free. Yeah. I do a lot of, when I do these presentations, I spend, I mean, you're looking at probably 15, 20 hours of research that I have done on your behalf. So I'm going to spend a lot of time bringing this material together for you, uh, which helps me and hopefully helps you. Okay, now, as I've mentioned, we have two ways to approach this, dedicated apps or mobile apps. Let's kind of compare, some, compare them real briefly. Dedicated is very custom and targeted. You're targeting a specific activity for your business. Okay? So you, you have a very specific thing you want to do and type people in. Like, for example, if you happen to be an owner of a mini a car, you know, a mini, mini Cooper, you can get an app called the Mini and put it on your, and it will tell you where all the other Mini users are and where they're going and what they're doing. And, and, and you can do all these kind of things, sort of making yourself part of this sort of mini club. See, and that's the kind of thing a business would do. So it kind of brings people together, and now you can market to them and advertise to them, and, 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 and it's a very, very walled garden, okay? That's the walled garden concept. It's very easy to use because it's targeted to do a specific one thing and nothing else. Okay, it doesn't try to do too much. It tries to do a very small subset of things and do it really well. But it's very expensive. We'll talk about that in a minute. And it's very specialized. Okay? Well, okay, right now, today, the tools are a little limited, but they're growing rapidly. Uh, the browser is limited, but it's, it's developing as HTML5 becomes more dominant. But it's much cheaper and it has a very high use rate. As you saw from our previous, that's why I wanted to show you that previous uh, list. That's the last page of your thing there, showing you how the browser dominates in terms of use. So you've got a really large group, large audience. So even though you do have limitations, it makes up for in the numbers. Okay? And that's going to gradually get better for you as the technology Okay, let's look at, let's take a brief, like five minute sidetrack on dedicated apps just so that you're aware of them. So if somebody says to you, hey, I can build a dedicated app for your business for only, mm -hmm. and they give you some number that seems reasonable at the time until you discover you're not getting anything. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's start from cheapest to most expensive, okay? The cheapest is like a basic table functions. Basically, it's just a bunch of data that's wrapped up in an app, and a person can open it up and look it up. And it doesn't go out, doesn't access anything out there, doesn't connect with anybody, it just does its little thing, okay? A little marketing kind of thing. That may be worth doing for a very select business, but it's not a very common thing that's useful. Database driven. This is where you have some static data and you have dynamic data where a person can query it, can ask questions, and it goes out and looks for for other kinds of data. That's very similar to the Google app, Field Trip. It has, it goes out and, and queries data out there and brings it in. It does one little extra thing, it does the push notifications, which is a little extra enhancement. And then we have games. Okay, lots of games. I've never been much of a gamer, I'm afraid. I'm too busy doing other things, but games are popular. And sometimes some businesses will develop games just to get people involved in their business. Then there's a group called Device Enhancement where it makes your phone do something better. Okay, those get start getting really expensive. And by what I mean by that is we're starting here at about four or five k, and we're getting into the two hundred k and three hundred k, and you know the, the money is going up in terms of the cost of developing it. <laughs> Fully dynamic user preferences. This is where you have like Salesforce develop a an app, you know, Salesforce, the, the whole, uh, who's not familiar with Salesforce? It's kind of like a, a content uh, customer management system mm -hmm. that's on the web that they now have a mobile version to. So it does a lot of stuff. It can, you can manage your whole sales team with it and stuff. So it's really, and then you have utilities that actually add functionality to your phone and allow you to do special things on your phone. It really gets into the nuts and bolts of your phone. That takes some really geeky kind of knowledge, and therefore very expensive. And then also you got to realize that those require a lot of uh, 
approval from Apple and from the various carriers before they're allowed to get on the phone because they're allowed to mess around with the guts of the phone. Mm -hmm. So you have to then get their approvals and stuff. So that adds to the expense. So let's look at some quick numbers. This is kind of a low middle range app. So you're looking at designer, 6,000. Server side development, 12,000. Client side development, that's the actual what's on the phone, 12,000. Project management, hosting, testing, another five. You're getting 35,000 just to get in, get into the first rungs, the first couple categories up there. And it can range anywhere from 5K at the very lowest end up to over 200,000. So that pretty much is out of all of our markets, okay? But just so you're aware of that, because Believe it or not, I'm already seeing it. People are out there saying, we can do this for only $59.95 a month. And I know they're getting, I just know they're getting taken. I won't say. <laughs> the ringer, huh? Yeah, I just know that they're getting taken advantage of. It's kind of like knowing that somebody says, hey, for this much, I'll help you jump off the cliff without dying, you know, and you just know the physics don't work there, so you, you know it's not going to happen. Okay, mobile web, let's get back on target, get back to what's reasonable for us. Basically, the definition is it refers to any access to the internet by a mobile device. That's what mobile web is. It's very simple. That's, that's it. That's all mobile web is. Access to the internet by a mobile device. Before smartphones, pre-smartphones, and there's a lot of people that still have that, it's very messy and clumsy. The phone, I remember I had a Trio before I got my first iPhone, and, oh man, websites were a mess. Sometimes the whole website was one graphic, the one big graphic of the website took over the whole thing, and you had to scroll and scroll and scroll before you get away from that crazy graphic. <laughs> so it didn't take much to totally mess up the website. And therefore, very frustrating to use. I, well, I did use it, but it was a challenge. Smartphones changed the whole picture. There's nothing neater than when you when you bet on those kinds of old phones to get onto a smartphone and go, that actually looks like a website. I mean, it's tiny, but it looks like a website. Wow, the whole thing's there. That's neat. So you got a much better display. But there's still a lot of frustration for traditional websites. Why? Because you have to pinch and squeeze and scroll and zoom into one little part of the website and then, okay, let me see, I think the navigation's over here. Oh no, the menu must be over here. Oh, there it is. You know, <laughs> and so you're playing this sort of, you know, like looking through a pinhole <laughs> game for this huge giant website. And, uh, um, well, yeah, you can see people lose interest real fast. Okay, unless you're just really determined you know, and, and, and to use it. So that's a problem that we've got to solve, and that solution starts under the header of mobile friendly. Okay, that's where we start our solution. That's where you need to start. What does it mean? Okay, these are the basic points that you've got to hit to be mobile friendly. You have to be thumb friendly. In other words, the thumb has to work. They have to be able to hit your navigation and hit things with their thumb and hit them and actually get them the first time, or at least the second time, and, and, and it actually works. The navigation's got to be simple and all there on their screen so they can easily see it. And without pinching and scrolling very much, especially no pinching. If you can do a little scrolling, the scrolling needs to be limited to one direction only. It's okay if they have to scroll this way or if they have to scroll this way, but if they have to, have to do both, they lose, you lose them. Fast loading. Mobile users are even more impatient than desktop users. We're talking about one or two seconds instead of three or four seconds. So your website needs to be really cut to the bone to be really mobile friendly. Now, I don't think any of you are going to do that to your website right off the bat. So if you can do most of the others without the fast, as a starter, that would be a good place to begin. But you need to be aware that getting your website to load faster is going to help you a lot. And the last thing, and this is critical because remember from our surveys, this is where users use this the most, 
you got to make sure your location and phone numbers are the first things they find. It's got to be front and center. You'll tap that phone number. Most phones will respond to it if it's not an image. Remember, you don't want your phone number buried in an image. You want it to be text so that the phone can read it and dial it. And some place that they can hit a location that will go to a map. A map button, for example. In other words, a button they can hit that gives them a map right off the bat. So those are the kind of things that, that you want front and center as a first round of mobile friendly. So you can do that to your website or some of these that you will be making a good first step on your website, making it more mobile friendly. Yeah, before you get into doing anything, you need to kind of measure where you're at. That's always a good idea. We're going on a trip, you want to make sure you got all your stuff and what you're missing so you can go get it. <laughs> and so Google has got a, what's called the GoMo initiative. So you can go to this URL and you can test your website. It'll make suggestions for you and rate you. And if you really are into self-abuse, <laughs> you can go to this site and it will really rake you over the coals. <laughs> I mean, Google looks like they're really nice compared to W3C. They really give you the they really give you the full picture. So if you can somehow pass the W3C mobile validator, you are home free. You can you can give yourself the old thumbs so up. So what you're saying is is that either one of these sites is where you can go and determine mm -hmm. how your site how mobile friendly mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They'll yeah. give you suggestions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would start with the Google site first as a first run, and then later on when you feel, you know, that, that, you're, doing something, that you're doing something and you're accomplishing something and now you really want some real serious advice, then go to the W3C mobile validator and then you'll discover how much you just haven't done yet. Because they will really rake you over the coals and rate you on dozens and dozens of factors. And you subscribe to that as well? You don't have to, it's all free. All that's is free. Did you check? Does yours check out against these guys? Uh, yeah, pretty good. Well, see, so you got to remember. You got to remember. It's a matter of the kind of website you have. My website's involved with a lot of, a lot of text for people to read about our services and stuff. That doesn't go over well. Okay. It's for business that you have to see. Yeah, it's different kinds of businesses. We're we're not we're we're into web development, and people don't buy web development on the phone. Okay. Other than yeah. other than our phone number. Okay, so we want to make sure our phone number is present so they can call us. But other than that, web development. So our business is not, though we are going to work to be more mobile friendly. Why not? I mean, that would be a smart thing to do. But um, we haven't put a lot of effort into it yet because that's not where our business comes from. Okay. Okay? But yes, I did do it, and I did pretty well here. I went here, and I just really got nailed. <laughs> it's like, oh, this is terrible. This is terrible. This is critical. Oh, blah, blah, blah. I'm going... Oh, how depressing. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's enlightening. I'd start with, I work, start with the go mode, kind of ease you into this so that you don't get too, too depressed too quickly. <laughs> and start with that and kind of get Google thinking you're pretty good. And then do the W3C. And if you, what happens if you pass all of those, you can actually put a banner on your site that you are, I think there's a, a logo from W3C that you can put on your site if you're your own mobile site, your official mobile site. Okay, you've passed all the tests. So I think I think this is where we all want to head. Okay, all of us. I mean that's where it's going. I mean me too. But uh, obviously this is a baby step kind of thing that we all have to work toward. Okay, getting started. What are the steps? What do I do now? Okay, there's our action points. First, you need to test your site and understand where you're at. Is, your, is there some parts of your site that are already mobile friendly? I mean, that's nice to know. Some of you will probably discover that there are parts of your site that are already pretty good. Okay, then determine your goals. What do you really want users to do when they land on your site? And what parts of your site do you want a mobile user to really make use of? There are parts of your site that are never going to be useful to a mobile user. Never. They're just never going to look at it. But a desktop user will. So you don't want to throw them away because it's good. It's just that it's not going to be for that market. OK? 
okay? And some of these mobile users do have desktops. Not as many as we like to think, but some of them do, and they will go to the desktop to get more, more research on your product or something if they, if they get interested. So you have to develop, you have to sort of narrow your goals down for what's going to be mobile, what's your, where you're going to focus your mobile. Then you're going to target your updates to those goals, and you're going to put the first prioritize and work on it because this can get this is this is not something you're going to do this next month this is something you're going to do over the next year or two years okay, this is a long-term process that you may may tune as you go along too and then the tools if you've got an HTML site or something that's not uh, part of uh, content management you will need to understand responsive design that's your buzzword responsive design so that's what you need to be uh, looking into it. So if you want to hire somebody to make your site, more, your static website more mobile friendly, but one of the questions you say, is this going to be, are you going to use responsive design? And if they go, huh, then walk away. <laughs> if they don't know what that means, you're in trouble. Now there's some very good books out at a bookapart.com, bookapart.com. There's a book on responsive design, that's the title. A book apart. A book apart. Matter of fact, a book apart is like the place to go for the latest technology on the web. Okay, they've got some great books there and great material and oh, good stuff. Good blog. I mean, if you don't know that site, you need to know it. If you're if you're into any kind of web development. Anyway, they have a really good book called Responsive Design. Read it. If you got uh, WordPress, there are some good plugins and themes, and there are also some third-party services. For example, if you're a restaurant, rather than do a lot of work on your site, you can you can actually uh, get into some services that will promote your site in a in a way that is very mobile friendly, so that you don't have to do a whole lot of work. Yes, it's going to cost you a monthly fee, but it might get you started very quickly and easily by using that third party service. So there's a lot of third party services that are coming. Obviously, you want to scrutinize them very carefully because, like anything, there's snake oil salesmen in, in all of this. And so you've got to be very aware. But there are some good services, especially for restaurants and things like that, that are already mobile friendly that can help promote your business in a very mobile friendly way. Okay? So those are third party services that you might want to tie into and look into as a beginning point to kind of get into the game without spending a lot of time and money. Because you do have to run your business, you know. <laughs> Despite what anybody wants to say. <laughs> okay, incremental goals. As I said early, this is an incremental kind of thing. You want to start off with the basics, and that's just being friendly. You don't want to put your customers off, regardless of where they're coming. So that's your first goal. That's your number one start off. You'll spend the next six months a year doing that. Then hopefully you can then get involved in, in doing some more of these kinds of things, sign up, mapping, push notifications, reservations, that's your next level that gets a little more sophisticated, requires a little more programming, a little more outlay of funds, third party tools might be available. And then along with that, maybe at the same time or maybe before, but if you're into any e-commerce then you might want to see what products you can sell on the mobile device that might be useful. Obviously, I don't think people are going to be buying cars online, but they would be researching. So you've got to understand the difference between what a mobile user might do buy versus research. So that, that depends on whether it's an e-commerce thing or whether it's a search kind of thing. Like I can see a car dealership saying, what kind of car are you interested in? And we'll notify you when it becomes available. Okay? I want this kind of car and I want this kind of price. And, you know, a month later, beep, hey, we got the car for you. I can see that as a neat service for a mobile user that's searching for a car. Okay. So, okay, what's next? Ah, oh, you stayed longer than you thought. No. <laughs> so we'll leave it three, but it's ten after. Sorry, guys. Gotcha. <laughs> what's next? Okay. We're going to have a couple more of these where we're going to dive deeper into this. Uh, we're going to look at responsive design a little bit, not too heavily because you're not all web developers, but you need to be a good web, 
developer consumer, at the very least. WordPress themes and plugins. WordPress is a big dominant platform out there, so we're going to spend some extra time on WordPress. There's some great plugins, there's some great themes. We're going to review them, talk about what's good and bad about some of them, what you're going to get out of it. In some cases, just changing your theme will do like 80% of what you want. You know, could be. Third party tools. We'll try, I'll try to find a lot of third party tools where you can be mobile in a box and talk about the costumes and opportunities. So we've got a couple of presentations coming up. We're going to start at the top and work our way down. And hopefully we can, in the next couple of months, have you really well educated on the mobile web. Thank you very much. I hope I helped you. And I'm open for questions and whatever. Yes. I read something now, a couple days ago, and it said that the, the PC is going the way of the telephone booth. And does that apply for offices, for business? That, no, I mean, somebody's being dramatic. <laughs> it, is, it is becoming, uh, most, most of, most younger people, like in their 20s and mm -hmm. under, there's a lot of them that don't even have a PC. Right. They have a tablet. Right, so so that's yeah. as close as they get in. And a tablet's, a tablet's like a PC in terms of how it operates, in terms of if you're seeing your website on a tablet, it's going to look like it is on a desktop. Right. So, you just need a cloud to, for all that. Right. Yeah. It's a technology. So they're moving, so they're not using a desktop, but they're still, it's still usable like a desktop. But, so, but businesses, people that Businesses are, are probably business. always going to be using, just like, just like there's still COBOL out there, there's still, there's still businesses using COBOL, which is a programming language okay. that that I cut my teeth on back in the 80s. Fortran actually is what I oh, cut my teeth on, but COBOL was very much like it. Okay. There's still applications out there written in it that are running businesses today. Yeah, I mean, some of this stuff never really goes away. Yeah, there, there's a place for it. For example, dot matrix printers. Do you remember dot matrix printers? I have a client that still uses them because they do three-part invoices that they